Restart required. How are you, sir? Thank you very much. Good that it's done, right? Let's go ahead and get the work session started for the November 13th uh, meeting. Didn't call it to order. <clears throat> and our finance director, Mr. Bob Snurk, go ahead and enlighten us. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the uh, budget was presented uh, last Monday, uh, Monday of last week, uh, to you all. And uh, I know you have a little over half an hour before your closed session, and that I think will work out well for. Um, just going through the introductory portions of our budget, hitting the, the mountaintops, if you will, the, you know, the high points that, um, that we want to bring to your attention before you really start digging into it. <clears throat> so uh, once again, in the general fund budget, we were mm. successful in achieving our target of having a 10% fund balance, 10% uh, of revenues in the general fund fund balance. So that's a fund balance of a little over $7 million that, that we have uh, at, that, at, at this point. A couple of the key um, assumptions. Bob, Bob, yes. Could I just, you might want to remind some of the council members who may not be aware of it of why that 10% is important, like for if we would ever have to borrow or any of those yeah. things. Yeah. <coughs> We've, we've never really deviated from that, I think, as far as I can remember back. And, and the reason for that is stability. Uh, we want any financial institutions that are out there. And we've had some bond issues uh, on occasion here, too. And one of the things that the, the underwriting firms will look at in deciding our credit worthiness is our stability. So by having that 10% benchmark, that's just a, a, an indication that over the long term, we have been able to maintain a fund balance that's healthy and at, at, with stability, and that's just sending information out to the bond markets. In fact, when we did the EOC bond issue, we originally wanted to borrow $16 million uh, and fund $8 million of our own money. Um, when our bonds went out to market on a competitive bid, uh, we wound up only having to borrow $15 million just just shy of a million dollars worth of premium that we received on that bond issue because um, bondholders out there in the, in the market saw us as a good risk and it was competition for our bonds. So um, we, we wound up getting a million dollars more in bond proceeds than, uh, than what we were borrowing. So that's just kind of a good benchmark for you to follow <clears throat> and one of the reasons why we want to do that. Um, indicators, we've assumed that in 2018, we'll finish the year with a two and one half percent increase in sales tax. Um, the, in 2019, we're looking at a 2% increase in the 2018 level of sales tax for projecting into next year. That's our, that we're looking at a 2% growth rate. Uh, in sales tax next year. Uh, these numbers, we want to be conservative, obviously, because the further we look out, um, the more at risk we are. On um, our 2018 numbers, we're budgeting for that 2.5% increase. And we have the fourth quarter yet to go because our numbers are really only through September right now. So we're looking at being able to uh, hold the line on that. But the fourth quarter is always an unknown for us. Um, we've talked about internet sales and e-commerce. Um, the Christmas buying season, prognosticators are saying, yeah, it should be a pretty good Christmas buying season. Uh, how much of that's on the internet? How much actually winds up in, in our retail numbers that we see uh, sales tax for? Uh, we don't know yet. So we have the fourth quarter of the year to go. Um, at the beginning of December, we'll get October's numbers, uh, but then that'll be it before it's time to pass the budget. Um, we are looking at a, uh, an employee raises of 3%, uh, a 1% cost of living increase that would move our pay grid. So anybody that's topped out in their pay range would, would see a 1% uh, um, 
pay raise of that uh, on the upper end, anybody up there. 2% merit. So when you take the 1% on top of the 2%, it averages to and comes out to a compounded 3.02% raise. Um, our health insurance. <clears throat> health insurance has been very stable this year, thankfully. Um, we've been living within our assumed claims limits and um, that we've had budgeted. So uh, there are no emergency transfers like we've had to do the last two years. You'll recall that we did about $2 million in each of the two previous years in 16 and 17, uh, just to keep the self-insurance fund whole. Uh, we don't anticipate that being necessary this year. And as such, we're holding the line on uh, health premiums as well. We're going to have a 1%, we're proposing a 1% increase in health premiums to the employees and a 2% uh, increase in the county share of health premiums. So we think that's, that's livable and, and reasonable uh, given the, uh, all the factors. And we've had to go to the employees, as you know, with, with some additional cost sharing um, in the last couple of years, where last year we implemented the 5% co-insurance provision. We've increased deductibles in the past some. So um, happy to say we're just going to bump the employee premiums 1%, and that'll be all that we do for this year. And, Mr. Chairman, that's reflected in the ordinance that you all passed right before we had open enrollment for the employees. So that, that's already accomplished. Some good news that we had also, and we get this at uh, usually in the spring. Every February 28th, our, our loggers um, retirement fund is reassessed by, by loggers. And they determine their rates for the following calendar year. So this past February, that valuation was done. And our loggers contribution rates actually decreased by a couple of tenths of percent. Uh, we have two different rates. We have a rate for law enforcement, and then we have a rate for our administrative employees, non-law enforcement. So it, it was slightly less than break even. Uh, it's, it, it resulted in about $90,000 worth of savings to the general fund. And uh, uh, we are on a good trend there, partially due to the fact that the stock market is doing well. So when the stock market does well, the assets in the plan are worth more, and that funds the, the plan further out for the, the retirement assumptions of when we all retire and there's a benefit being paid, that there's money there to, to meet that target. So um, we're happy about that. We'll get another uh, uh, in, uh, notification and sometime after the February 2019 valuation date. This is the second year that we've used the cost allocation plan for determining what funds should be charged for the overhead that the general fund provides to non-general fund departments. So finance, HR, um, counselor's office, all the general fund uh, departments. IS is, is a huge uh, part of that with all of the technology and, and uh, infrastructure support that they provide to all departments. Uh, this is the second year that we've used that basis for determining the charge that the general fund is charging, the, the non-general fund uh, revenue funds. Um, before we finalize these numbers this year, uh, the budget committee went to school to learn cost allocation 101. And we spent a lot of time between everybody that uh, Jennifer, John, uh, Joanne, uh, Debbie Salvo, Tracy Bain, and myself, um, just digging into the cost allocation plan hard because we saw after last year, and, and last year we made this change kind of late in the budgeting process. And after the fact, some, some areas were identified where we had some overlap and duplication. And so we spent a lot of time digging down into this calculation. It's pretty complicated and uh, very detailed but we have a great consultant who was very patient with us. And I think we had five or six iterations of the cost allocation plan before we finalized it to provide the numbers you see in that budget. But um, we're confident at this point that it is reasonably based, that uh, we've eliminated duplications, 
and we think that it's, uh, it's a good plan, and it'll be the benchmark now for moving forward. Um, we plan to do a cost allocation plan every year so that we can generate these numbers that we, we use. So um, we uh, will do this again next year. <clears throat> uh, Bob, if I can, has anybody got any questions at this point? Okay. Okay. Yeah, jump in any time. I'm, I'm, I'm here to answer your, your questions. So if you all have any questions, please just speak up and, and I'll help you out. Um, talk about personnel. In the general fund, uh, the general fund budget that you have before you includes 15 new positions this year. Um, we had a total of 34, I think, positions that were requested by county departments. Um, one of the things that I do want to mention is the fact that last year we did not have any new, new uh, positions in the general fund, just out of sheer necessity. Last You'll remember last year's budget was extremely tight. We were still, de still dealing with the after effects of, of the self-insurance fund. So uh, um, we didn't do anything in the general fund last year in the way of new positions. So we are playing catch up to some degree. Uh, and I'd like to run down those positions uh, with you uh, briefly here. Uh, we, have, we have five positions in information services, a project manager, system tech three, two applications analysts, and one security analyst. Um, it goes without saying that our technology infrastructure here just keeps growing and uh, it becomes more complex every year. One of these positions is the security analyst, which is a position that, that we really need. And all of you know from private practice, your, your own emails, that, that cybersecurity is an absolute must and, and we need to dedicate more resources to that. Um, so there is a position for a security analyst that's being requested in this budget. <clears throat> um, we'll get into some of the specifics about these positions at our next meeting. I've been talking with Chairman Hammond and um, time doesn't really permit to drill down into all these positions tonight, but um, we welcome the opportunity to discuss the requests with you in more detail at that point. In facilities, uh, a lead custodian is being requested principally because of the new EOC. We have a huge building out there that, that requires uh, attention. In corrections, we have a total of six positions. There's a caseworker being requested and five corrections officers. And uh, just as, we, as we've seen in law enforcement, the demands on, on the jail are really no different. The standards are changing. They're, the demands of, of incarceration are just extremely rigorous and constantly under the scrutiny of, of uh, outsiders, and we need to make sure that those operations are running satisfactorily as, and staffed as well. Um, <clears throat> Director Keene has a, uh, a good handle on this, and he's got a lot of great ideas, and, and we're listening to him um, by this request. Then the police department has three positions, a forensic scientist, a detective and another officer for the firing range. Our firing range is just in huge demand. We're running two shifts out there many times, and um, it's it's a it's a facility that's being used constantly. Um, I can attest because I can hear it from my house, <laughs> and it uh, it's a busy place. Um, <clears throat> let me get into the other funds um, we have in the other. Uh, funds that are not in the general fund. We have a total of 10 positions that uh, we're requesting in this budget. Uh, in the road and bridge department, we are asking for a title processor for right-of-way acquisition and, and the, the, the land needs that that department has uh, in its operations. Assessment is uh, requesting a, a GIS manager. And then we have five positions in the county parks department, which I don't think we'll catch anybody by surprise. Uh, we opened three new parks this past year, and um, parks is a busy place. And with those uh, new parks being added, obviously, staffing is required. 
I'm a little surprised that it's only five. How many? How many did they request? How many was requested um, from the parks? I don't have that. John, do you remember what, how many were, were requested? I think we granted all the requests. I think yeah. there was only the five that they requested. Okay. And the, those five come down to a, a maintenance worker, so someone that's going to cut the grass, uh, a forestry person, forestry specialist is the title that's basically the tree trimmer, someone that's going to keep up with our trimming of the trees and that are on the, within the park. Then we have a hard cultural specialist, which is essentially someone that takes care of the landscape. In Veterans Tribute Park, we have, I think, about seven acres worth of planting, planted beds. So that's going to require someone to do a simple job of pulling weeds and making sure the flowers that are, are planted on a seasonal basis. They did then kind of grow their kind of organization. Right now, we have a superintendent of parks. And then underneath that superintendent of parks, uh, there is a, um, a lead for each of the parks. So they created assistant superintendent parks so they can kind of break the system into uh, two regions that they each would be responsible for. So that's number four. And then they created, they're asking for a recreation specialist, uh, which would help with the programming side. We have a lot more weddings that are occurring within our parks that require someone to go out there and meet with that person, but they also have more 5K runs. We have more disc golf tournaments. We have more just activities occurring, and that just takes a body to coordinate with those, you know, those third-party vendors that are doing work in, in our park system. So that's the five that they requested. John, are you adding Thank any you. park rangers? Um, we have additional discussion we need with the council on park rangers, um, and we can talk a little bit more about that, I think, later on tonight. Was that a yes or no? That was a <laughs> non-committal. <laughs> that was, um, that was you're going to try to... It's a wait and see. There's two options that we really want to discuss yeah. through on the park rangers. Okay. And, and need the council's input before we... They requested we need to do something with park rangers and, and, and security in the parks, and we need council's input on that. Other positions that... that um, are in non-general revenue departments. Um, emergency communications is adding one police dispatcher. The regional medical examiner is adding a, a chief death investigator. And um, <coughs> that operation has, I, I think, worked very well this year. This was a new operation that came into being in, on very short notice last year when we received notification of cost increases from St. Louis University for that operation. We went into a joint venture with Franklin and Jefferson counties. And we've had quarterly meetings with uh, uh, Executive Waller and the presiding commissioner of Franklin County. Um, and we've uh, launched out with a budget that we were hopeful was going to work for 2018. And I'm happy to say that it looks like we're going to live within that budget for the first year of operation resulting in cost savings to the three counties collectively um, by doing this collective effort. In the meantime, also, uh, we've secured funding from Mid-America Transplant uh, for um, a death investigator position and, and bumping a part-time admin to full-time. You all have, I think you've passed that bill now at this point. Um, so we've enhanced that operation to have better turnaround on death investigations to aid in when people are organ donors, that the tissue and organs, that sort of thing, can get to their intended source, uh, our, our point of distribution, so that it becomes uh, an enhancement to the quality of life to burn victims and, and people who, who need organ transplants. So um, it's a great effort, and Mid-America Transplant, with our three-year agreement now that's in place with them, is helping with that funding. We're also part of a couple of grant programs that uh, we receive subsidies back from the state for reporting violent death and opioid deaths and reporting those cases. And uh, we also get a, a reimbursement now for child deaths, autopsies. We get a subsidy of $2,000 back on, on those autopsies that, that when those are necessary. So we have some, some, some revenue sources coming back into the program as well. Uh, we've set the budget uh, that you see uh, pretty much at the end of your budget book. Um, and I think all the counties at this point are very happy with 
the, the results of this first year. And uh, we look forward to, uh, to another good year with them. It's a great example of regional cooperation. And uh, uh, I think uh, if you take some time and look at the budget and, and see what's going on there, you'll see that a lot of good stuff is happening. And then uh, the Family Arena, near and dear to my heart, um, is uh, requesting a, uh, a guest services manager. This position was a full-time position up until 2015 when we eliminated the position and some of the reorganization that, that I did when I, I first stepped there uh, into that role there of overseeing the operation. Since that time, we've been um, operating with a part-timer in that position that's nearly a full-time position, but um, with the demands of that position and some additional duties, that position's taking over on group, uh, group ticket sales. Um, we are asking for that position back as a full-time position, and in the family arena budget, we are reducing the part-time salaries uh, commensurately for the uh, cost of that position beforehand. So uh, that's a rundown on the, on the positions. Last thing that I'll mention to you is uh, what's near and dear to uh, a lot of our taxpayers out there is roads. And just a, a real quick note in the transportation budget, we have about 77, almost $78 million appropriated in the transportation budget this year for road projects. There are, uh, by my count in the budget, there were 77 road projects listed uh, specifically in the budget and appropriated for in the 2019 year. So transportation is always busy and uh, a lot of things going on there, but I, I wanted to mention the fact of, of just a, a huge amount of money is being dedicated to transportation still in this county with a lot of work going on all over the county in cooperation with the cities. So with that, um, those are my high, high points and um, be happy to answer any other questions that you have. What, what uh, or Steve, you might be on what kind of position are we in now that the gas tax didn't pass? That's going to really kind of hurt our county on road improvements. Um, are we going to have to step it up more, or is MODOC or the legislator going to have to make some tough decisions and do the right thing, or just let our roads fall apart? Well, the legislature would be nice if they, if they did just do this, but the people having voted, I can't see them doing that. I mean, I can't see them just coming right back and either doing it on their own or even sending it out for another. But I think there's definitely some things they learned on what not to do the next time. I really never heard any intelligent discussion as to why we didn't need this money. All the negative stuff I heard was about what's this, what's this with the highway patrol and what's this with the, you know? So, um, yeah. And... Um, the answer is I don't, uh, I don't regret any of the money that we've spent on the MoDOT system because if we hadn't spent it, I can't imagine what that traffic would be like out now. I mean, can you imagine this county without Phase 3 of Page? I mean, can you imagine I-70 without some of the improvements we've done on it? So I don't have any regrets. My question is how much longer can we continue to do this? I mean, th that's money that we should be spending on our county roads that we've been spending on the MoDOT system. Same way with the cities. The cities are spending money, they ought to be, you know, they ought to be spending in the, in the subdivisions, doing subdivision streets and things like that. Uh, city and county have, have put a lot of that aside to basically subsidize the MoDOT system. For the, the, the nine biggest <coughs> projects that they've done in the last uh, uh, four or five years, only 40% of the revenue has come from MoDOT. And you think back, you know, it was only, they, only, they did half of Phase 3 of Page. They did a third of Piney Road. They did, a, was it a third or a half of uh, uh, Mid Rivers? Did a third of Mid Rivers. And what they did, did highway? Half. They did half. half. And how about K? <clears throat> K, they're about a third. About a third. And out here on Fifth Street, we did it all. City and the county did the whole blaming thing. So. There's got to be something done because we can't continue to subsidize them like that. But I can't imagine how bad things would be right now if we hadn't, over the last several years, you know, kicked some money into this. So, Joe, I don't know. The answer is I don't know, but something's got to give. And we got some legislators, you know, who want to take money out of general revenue and give it to the roads. Well, 
that's fine. Do it. But so far, they've just been talking about it. And, uh, of course, you know, for me, it's, it's, the, it's the fairest system we got. It's a user tax. Nobody has to pay it. If you don't drive, you don't pay a dime. If you drive a little bit, you pay a little bit. If you drive a whole lot, you pay a whole lot. So I don't think there's any better way to finance our roads. And I, would, I, just, I want the state people to step up and realize they have a responsibility. Now, you know, there's other parts of the state that really don't care about new roads as long as you take care of what they got because they're not growing. But we're growing. We can't just maintain what we got. We need to build new stuff. And if we don't, we're not going to grow. And if we don't grow, you know, the whole region is not going to grow. So I know I'm preaching to the choir on all this stuff, but try to answer your question, Joe. No, I get it. Yeah. And it? I got a question, and, and I'm glad that the department heads here maybe could answer it. <laughs> if, if you don't have the answer, right? community development. Uh, several years ago, they paid professional services, but uh, this 2019 budget is set for 1,189. Uh, that's the CDBG program, right, oh. Mike? Yeah, yeah. So okay. that that flows through that line item. So. Yeah. That makes sense now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's federal money. That's not real money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's real money. All right. Yeah. Uh, anybody else got any questions? Uh, well, Dave, uh, what's your plan for the uh, budget meetings? I know we haven't <laughs> set, so how are we going to, we're just going to go through each department and you're going to call in department heads or what? You, what's your plan? Well, I'd like, kind of like to know what the, Position of the council is if they how they would like to proceed. Well, what we've done in the past is we'll let what if we whatever we're where we're starting, we're starting from the beginning and we have we think we'll cover uh, three or four, whatever, how many departments we think we you want to put them on notice if they want to come in and at least have an opportunity to talk to us. That's what we've always done in the past. I think it, it works. I, I really like having the, the department directors in and being able to ask them directly what, and, and get an explanation of, of, you know, new programs that they're working on, whatever. We have very little contact with the, the department directors, and I think it's a good opportunity to, to find out what, what, it, what exactly it is that we're funding. The, the document's big enough already, we can't really get uh, um, too much more detail about it. Sometimes we just need to, to hear it directly from them. Okay, we can certainly, Set that up if everybody else wants to do that. Do it that way. That's fine with me. So, Mr. Uh, Chairman, I'll, do you want to set up a schedule then for the departments that you all want to see? Um, we need a little guidance here as to putting folks on notice and when we have we have uh, end of the month and and then two meetings in December before you all pass the budget. So well, I think in the past we've given the elected officials an opportunity to come and talk about it. Um, so I think uh, what we'll do for our next meeting is uh, allow them to come in for our first work session. And then... Uh, Why don't we take a little time and figure out which ones that we want to try to tackle um, and get back to Bob and... and admin so that they can we don't need all of them here for the whole for every night because right. we're not no gonna, right. we get, we're not possibly going to get to all of them mr chairman may i ask too then if you all are going to have the elected officials in maybe <coughs> on the on the um the, the 26th we could also have the departments that are going to have substantial change in their fte that are part of these groups both funds so maybe we could do um, corrections, I asked the police and parks if that would be acceptable. Well, I, I have a lot of questions regarding IS, and uh, so we might want to wait for the following meeting for, for uh, the department head. 
Well, we could lead with IAS if you want. <clears throat> we could we could start with department heads, and it's kind of up to us as to how we bring them in, right? Yeah. Sure. <clears throat> you guys decide, and just let us know what you want to do. Okay. Okay. Thank you all. I, I, okay. I, I did want to mention one thing. I mean, I'm kind of disappointed in the 3% raise for employees. I think they only got 2% last year. And uh, now we're adding on 15 positions. And just the cost of living for, for this past year was uh, right at or right okay. under 3%. So we're just barely keeping up with I have those concerns too, and I want to get a little bit when when the time rises, maybe in each of the the departments. But to find out how many of our employees are capped out, they're already topped out, so they're only getting a one percent raise. So if you've been, you know, if you stuck it out here and you've been loyal to the county and you've made this your career, well, if you've if you've topped out, then there's there's not a lot of, of, yeah. of meat on the bone. That's a, that's a stat that we look at, and I think it's about 45 um, countywide okay. out of 1,150, 1,160 positions. Yeah. Bob, do we know what other, um, what other uh, jurisdictions have done this year? Uh, I, haven't, I haven't looked um, specifically. Generally, I'm hearing around 3%. Can we yes. look yeah. and see if, you know, how many are under that and how many are over it? Yeah, we can. Yeah, yeah. we talked about it at the... Um, uh, administrators meeting uh, a we week and a half ago and um, almost everybody's either, either at three or two or three and a quarter or something like that why is it that we don't give all employees the three percent raise like these 45 <laughs> why do these 45 not get that raise they're at the top of their pay scale for the position that they hold and so that's the grid, we'll, we'll generally call it. There's an entry level for a, a pay grade, and then it goes to a maximum. And what that generally signifies is the fact that, that, that a person has stayed in the same job for a long time and has gotten to the top of the range. The, the ranges are looked at, and they were looked at initially with the Evergreen study that we did back in 2015. And right. We've been updating them on an annual basis since uh, on a cycle type of, of approach. Um, looking at the, the comparable worth of positions compensationally compared to the marketplace. And generally, I, uh, reports that we've gotten back are that we are comparable in market, very, very favorable as far as comp comparability to the marketplace. So I don't think we're underpaying people. But if somebody's been in a position for a long period of time, they get to a point of, and, and the theory is you, you work through a job pay scale to a, to a point of mastering that position. And once you've mastered that position, you either promote to go on or you're, you're there. So the only time, according to our structure, that we have the ability to give someone who's capped out a raise is when we move the grid by cost of living not the merit component. So okay. that's, that's the That's quick expensive answer. to do because we move the whole grid. We don't move just the top range. Right. So it affects everybody in that, in that department and that all the employees. Sure. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you guys have questions? No. My only concern, to be frankly, I read through it quite a bit, I guess, is I understand the different funding mechanisms, but I think it's kind of sad that we get five new park employees, but only three new cops. And I think we probably need cops as bad as we need park employees. I don't yeah. think you got any choices unless you get creative with the, with you know, maybe we need to have um, the St. Charles County Park Jail or something like that. <laughs> there are uh, different funds. That's the whole thing. Yeah. I mean, you know, the fund, parks fund has the dedicated use tax, and fortunately, uh, that has been good to the Parks Department to allow land acquisition, expansion, development, site, site planning, and, and uh, a lot's been happening there, as you all well know. Did police ask for more employees, or were three what they asked for? No, oh, they asked for more. How many more? Uh, I believe they asked for, no. <laughs> uh, no, the chief's not totally insane, believe me. Uh, they asked for seven. Seven. 
On the park ranger, are you know you're going to talk about that, John. You don't want to talk about it now, is what you're saying? Oh, we'll talk about it later. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. You know, another thing I, I looked at is I was looking at revenues, you know, total revenue versus total expenditures, and it, 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 the appearance, at least on page four, is that we're dipping into the beginning fund balance. We, we have 132,000 in it now. At the end of 19, we're going to be down to 37,000. Looks like we're spending 100 grand more than we took in. In, in which fund? Uh, I'm talking about in, in all funds. The all fund summary page. It shows. Well, uh, it shows total revenue of 240,000. Million. And total expenditures million. of 325. Million. Million. A million. I'm sorry. <laughs> three. Yep. Million. Uh, That's there are there are items appropriated. Uh, for example, um, transportation. Is probably the leading contributor to that where we'll get we have projects on the board and we have it's just a constant kind of role of of those projects and so some get done faster than others but that's the the plan that ultimately will happen and many times that just rolls from year to year so we wind up with more expenditure on the books and transportation is is probably the lead so basically uh, some of, of the money that was allocated from this past year is going to end up being spent next year. That's where yeah. the numbers look skewed. Right, exactly. Okay. And so, yeah, we, uh, we have more appropriation than we have revenue for, but we will never appropriate to a point where we take our fund balance as negative. We cannot do that. And as I said at the beginning, Joe, I, before you got here, was um, we've succeeded again in, in hitting our 10% target in the general fund so that uh, the g ending general fund fund balance is 10% of our, our revenues for the year. So that's the key benchmark that we follow. Okay, do we um, move into close session now? Or, or All we, right, uh, at, this, at this point I would uh, entertain a motion to go into closed session. I take it, motion made. Motion made per state statute of RSMO 610.021, um, items two and three. To and a go motion. closed session. Second. And I got a second. And that takes a roll call. Councilmember Cronin? Yes. Councilmember Brazel? Yes. Councilmember Elam? Yes. Councilmember Hammond? Yes. Councilmember Hollander? Councilmember Klinghammer? Yes. Councilmember White? Yes. Okay. Do we all fit? I will see you for Terry. while allowing you to go right back to your daily activities and has the flexibility to work with your schedule. Greenbrook welcomes all insurance. To see if TMS therapy is right for you or a loved one, visit Greenbrook. TMS.com. I can't believe Turkey Day is almost here. And Sierra Mist put together a list of cocktails sure to get the party started. Mix, mist, and mingle with one of my favorite recipes, the sparkling apple. Fill a highball with ice. Pour in one and a half ounces of Crown Royal Regal Apple Canadian Whiskey. Three ounces of Sierra Mist. Then top it off with a fresh lime. Your Thanksgiving guests will go crazy for this cocktail. Plus, it'll take the attention away from the fact that you burn the turkey. Again, discover more Thanksgiving cocktail and mocktail recipes at mixmistandmingle.com. And while you're there, enter for a chance to win $2,500 for your ultimate mingle from Sierra Mist. Always crisp and refreshing, made with real sugar. That's mixmistandmingle.com. Drink responsibly. No purchase necessary. Ends 1-1-19. Planning a Thanksgiving dinner? Stop by your neighborhood Deerbergs for your party needs, including Sierra Mist, the perfect beverage for mixing and mingling this holiday season. Discover delicious Thanksgiving cocktail and mocktail recipes from Sierra Mist, made at MixMistAndMingle.com. Oreo, America's number one cookie brand, has combined with Milka's smooth, creamy chocolate candy to create the perfect combo, Oreo Chocolate Candy Bars. Pick up this perfect combo of king-size Oreo chocolate candy bars at your local retailer today. At Ulta Beauty, the holidays are all about letting your inner glam shine through at every occasion. So whether you're getting ready to show them who's boss at the office party with pink and berry shades from Urban Decay's new Naked Cherry Palette, or you're getting ready for a mistletoe moment with colorful, kissable lip kits from brands like Tarte, ColourPop, and Anastasia, Ulta Beauty is here to help you shine brighter all season long from Friendsgiving to New Year's Eve. 
Get ready to gift. Get ready to glam. Get ready to shine brighter. Only at Ulta Beauty. The possibilities are beautiful. Simplify your vacation planning during Apple Vacation Super Sale. The best selection of hotels and flights are available now. Leave your stress behind and escape to Los Cabos. Discover breathtaking beaches, world-class oceanfront resorts, deep sea fishing, championship golf, and world-famous nightlife. Five nights at Holiday Inn Resort Los Cabos All-Inclusive start from only $6.99. Or make it five nights at Barcelo Gran Faro Los Cabos starting from just $8.99. And with Apple Vacations, it's all included. Non-stop round-trip air from St. Louis Lambert International Airport. Resort transfers, all meals, drinks, and taxes. Call Gulliver's Travel at 636-379-2700 to book your trip today. Los Cabos, two seas, one paradise. Mexico, a world of its own. Prices per person based on double occupancy for select exclusive vacation flights from St. Louis to Los Cabos on Valaris, PC18131, starting January 20th, and include taxes and fees, including September 11th security fee. Some flights are operated by other airlines. Baggage charges apply. See AppleVacations.com. Prices subject to availability and change. Restrictions apply. You won't find a more romantic holiday gift than diamond jewelry from Shane Company. Hi, I'm Tom Shane. And I'm Ed. As a lead diamond buyer for over 20 years, I assure you that the quality specifications for a Shane Company diamond set us apart from every jeweler. In each GIA grade, we only select the diamonds with spectacular brilliance and optimal dispersion and scintillation. Every diamond must pass our demanding visual beauty test. Thanks to Ed, our diamonds sparkle like no others. Shane Company has diamond gifts from around $150 to over $20,000. Classic styles, vintage styles, and statement pieces. We have stud earrings from under a quarter carat to over four carats, and beautiful solitaire pendants, hoop earrings, and diamond tennis bracelets. We look into the soul of every diamond, so it will be cherished for a lifetime. We'll help you find the perfect gifts. Now you have a friend in the jewelry business, Shane Company and Shaneco.com. Co-founder of the Beach Boys, Brian Wilson. Greatest Hits Live with special guests Al Jardine and Blondie Chaplin. November 15th, The Family Arena. Tickets are on sale now at the Carroll House box office located at The Family Arena or online at MetroTix.com. Brian Wilson, Greatest Hits Live. Cirque Music a Holiday invites you to the world of Wonderland, a one-of-a-kind holiday concert event. Wonderland comes alive as amazing aerialists, acrobats, and hilarious hijinks create a fun celebration for the entire family. Featuring the world-renowned cast of Cirque Musica, together with your favorite holiday hits, performed by a live symphony orchestra. December 2nd, 6 p.m., the Family Arena. Tickets on sale now, online at MetroTix.com. Cirque Music a Holiday presents Wonderland, presented by the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Hey, it's Big Mike, born and raised in St. Louis my entire life. So, of course, Steak and Shake is one of my favorite all-time restaurants. There's one right across the street from the radio station here that I'm at all the time for lunch. Of course, because of the food is fantastic, but also I hate spending a lot of money on lunch, and I don't have to spend that at Steak and Shake. Four meals, four items, under four bucks, like the original double and cheese steak burger. That's probably the one I go to the most. Uh, also, the bacon and cheese single steak burger the triple steak burger, or also the uh, chicken fingers. They all come with fries, and then you get to choose another side. You can get a creamy coleslaw, applesauce. You want more fries, you can get more fries. They get the baked beans, uh, the cup of soup, or a cup of chili. You can pick one of those sides, and then on top of that, you get yourself a cookie. It's a fantastic deal, and I'm over there all the time. Four meals, four items, under four bucks at Steak and Shake right now. Pay off credit card debt with a personal loan from Mark. Marcus by Goldman Sachs. When you have a family, life adds up. A new semester of school, a new season on the team, and new goalie pads to go with it. Now your youngest wants to learn an instrument. And of course, she didn't pick the harmonica. Debt happens. It's how you get out that counts. Get a personal loan from Marcus by Goldman Sachs. Fixed interest rates and no fees, ever. Learn more at Marcus.com. Here's the latest forecast from the Jim Butler Auto Group.com Weather Center. Temperatures are cold overnight tonight. We drop into the teens to around 20 for the lows under a clear sky. We start with sun on Wednesday, but clouds are on the increase Wednesday afternoon. We'll get some snow in here heading into Wednesday night and Thursday. Highs on Wednesday should be in the mid to upper 30s. For 5 on your side weather, I'm meteorologist Scott Connell.
This report sponsored by South County Dodge. I'm Paul Brown with South County Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. The Black Friday sales event is going on all month at the STL Giant. Over 800 new Jeeps and Rams are priced to go. Shop STLGiant.com. South County Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. We have the most, we sell the most, you save the most. Afternoons. Powered by Handcrafted by Bissingers on 103.3 KL. Now, text the nationwide keyword WIN, W-I-N, to 200-200. You'll get a text confirming entry plus iHeartRadio info. Standard data and message rates apply in this nationwide contest. That's WIN to 200-200.
still fires you up. St. Louis's greatest hits. 103.3 K. Play 103.3 KLOU on your iHeartRadio app and see St. Louis's greatest hits are on 103.3 KLOU.
Uh, this cool story that St. Louis Blues are involved with. They're trying to help this uh, 10-year-old girl find some bone marrow. She has been diagnosed with this, this disease that's so rare, it's only been identified in 15 other children in the world. And before they can start any treatments, they have to find a bone marrow donor match. So next Monday, when the Blues are back home hosting the Kings, they're going to be allowing fans to sign up for the Be the Match registry to see if they can find a match for this girl to help her out with some bone marrow. So if you're going to that game, maybe you can sign up for the registry and help this girl out. Blues on the road tomorrow. They're going to be in Chicago. Game time seven. Let's go, Blues. Here's your latest SSM health traffic. This report is sponsored by BOS. From the Lufuse Automotive Traffic Center, earlier accidents southbound 270 south of Manchester, westbound 44 before 270, eastbound 270 east of Lindbergh, and southbound 170 at the Forest Park Parkway. I'm Tori Lyons. That's your total traffic. Thinking about switching banks? Make the bold move and switch to BOS, where friendly service and financial expertise go hand in hand. Come see the difference local makes. BOS. Bank boldly. Member FDIC. Hey, St. Louis. GEICO presents need-to-know information because you have to draw the line between what you need to know and what you don't. Yesterday, I did nothing but eat potato chips and ice cream and listen to 80s email music. See, didn't need to know that. But when it comes to insurance, the more you know, the better. Like knowing GEICO is the second largest auto insurer in the country. Plus, they've been around for over 75 years and have a 97% customer satisfaction rating. I only floss my teeth twice a year when the dentist does it for me. Again, not really needed. But knowing GEICO offers more than just car insurance is important. Like motorcycle, RV, and boat insurance. And the GEICO Insurance Agency can help you insure your home, apartment, and condo. Sometimes I act like I'm texting someone, but I'm really just taking a bunch of selfies. And not needed. But you should know local agents in your area could help you find even more savings with GEICO, like military or federal discounts. And GEICO offers emergency roadside service. Switching insurance is an important decision. You can never know too much about it. So St. Louis, contact GEICO online, over the phone, or at your local office for all the information you really need. Are you the kind of person who cares about where your food comes from? Just Bear brand chicken features a trace code printed on every pack, always allowing you to learn where your chicken was raised. Log on to whomakesyourfood.com to see how. Just Bear chicken is all natural, uses no antibiotics ever, and is always cage-free, promising a nutritious and delicious meal for your family. Find us at your local grocery store. Minimally processed, no artificial ingredients. Yes, buying jewelry can be scary. Yes, you might not know exactly what to get. And yes, you could play it safe. But real devotion means being a bit more daring. That's why Jared's Dare to Give Big semi-annual event is the perfect time to take the leap. Get the best prices of the season from November 14th to the 18th on an amazing collection of jewelry and exclusive pieces you won't find anywhere else. This holiday, dare to be devoted. Because yes, she's going to love it. Some exclusions apply. Visit Jared.com for details. It was all going so well until... <laughs> I've been wanting to get to you for a long time. Chucky, ducky, quack, quack. <laughs> Smells so good. I'm taking it all in. What y'all laughing at? All new Family Feud. Yeah, I'm getting scared. <laughs> Family Feud, tonight at 6 and 6.30 on ABC 30. I hear from a lot of young women who are sick and tired of attracting the same guys. The man child. The fake entrepreneur. Everybody on every <laughs> dating app is a CEO of what exactly? Can she stop dating the usual suspects? Now you better. Plus, I'm going to do a little gloat. Steve found real love for real housewife Cynthia Bailey. I'm just asking you, is, is marriage a possibility now? Is it on the table? Next, Steve. Steve, tomorrow at 4 on ABC 30. Hello, St. Louis. It's Dan Loggins here to tell you about the first ever Napleton Car Giveaway going on now. From now until December 19th, visit any one of our five convenient locations in St. Louis, Hazelwood, or St. Charles, and take a test drive to register to win a vehicle of your choice. That's right. It's easy. Take a test drive and register to win. The Napleton Car Giveaway is our way of giving back to the community. We pride ourselves on our customer comes first mentality. We want to make the car buying experience fast, friendly, and fair. It's the real deal. Stop in at any of our five 
five locations and take a test drive today to register to win. Visit us online at NapletonSTL.com for the location nearest you. When you visit the dealership, don't forget to tell them Dan Logan sent you. Call 636-229-1723 at 636-229-1723 for complete contest details. Second to none since 1931. Free the oven this Thanksgiving with a Butterball Electric Fryer by Masterbuilt. Save that oven space for your side dishes and fry a delicious turkey in about an hour. Available at retailers nationwide. Visit masterbuilt.com for more information. The Missouri Lottery presents How to Speak Californian for your gourmet getaway to Napa Valley. I'd like some toast. I'd like some avocado toast. Could I have the steak? Could I have the pasture-raised, grass-fed, rye-finished, locally-sourced California ribeye with foraged field mushrooms? Thank you so much for this delicious meal. Dude, seriously. For a chance to win an incredible food and sightseeing tour of Napa Valley, Italy, or France, enter the gourmet getaway promotion at molottery.com. Play responsibly. Putting up with crazy traffic isn't always a choice. Semis passing over here, motorcycles over here, tailgaters back here, and up there, a guy who's driving like he's never seen rain before. But in Nissan, we build cars with Nissan Intelligent Mobility. Inside the 2018 Rogue, technology is designed around you, like available ProPilot Assist. It's here, here, and here. And it helps keep you from getting too close to the lane on the left, or the right, or the car in front of you, helping you stay centered. But no matter how much technology we put in our cars, we'll always keep you in the driver's seat. The 2018 Nissan Rogue, starting at $24,800. Now the most exciting tech you own is in your driveway. Availability of features varies by vehicle model year, model, trim level, packaging, and options. ProPilot Assist is an available feature and cannot prevent collisions. Always monitor traffic conditions. Keep both hands on the steering wheel. See owner's manual for safety information for well-qualified buyers. 24800 MSRP excludes tax, title, license, and destination charge. Dealer sets actual price. At Ulta Beauty, the holidays are all about letting your inner glam shine through at every occasion. So whether you're getting ready to show them who's boss at the office party with pink and berry shades from Urban Decay's new Naked Cherry Palette, or you're getting ready for a mistletoe moment with Colorful, kissable lip kits from brands like Tarte, ColourPop, and Anastasia. Ulta Beauty is here to help you shine brighter all season long, from Friendsgiving to New Year's Eve. Get ready to gift. Get ready to glam. Get ready to shine brighter. Only at Ulta Beauty. The possibilities are beautiful. Call an all-closet pop stars in St. Louis! Studies indicate that skipping cigarettes when you'd normally smoke them helps prepare you to quit for good. So trade that smoke for your favorite song. You know, your go-to. The one you sing better than the original artist. Cut it loose from the diaphragm. Sing like nobody's watching. That guy in the hatchback is watching, but forget him. He's uptight. And after you drop the mic, head over to everytrycounts.gov for more great quitting tips. Pay off credit card debt with a personal loan from Marcus by Goldman Sachs. When you have a family, life adds up. A new semester of school, a new season on the team, and new goalie pads to go with it. Now your youngest wants to learn an instrument. And of course, she didn't pick the harmonica. Debt happens. It's how you get out that counts. Get a personal loan from Marcus by Goldman Sachs. Fixed interest rates and no fees, ever. Learn more at Marcus.com. Black Friday deals start now at Ashley Home Store with 20% off everything and zero interest. From the Midwest RV Center in South...